I'm Kirsten Penton. I work for Partners in Learning, and I'm responsible for a program called Partners in Learning in Western Europe. Partners in Learning is a global program, which has been going on for nine years now, where we work or partner with the ministers of education, anyone in education within the country, down to the single teacher. And the very short story is that we want to bring education into the 21st century. The slightly longer story is that we focus on innovation in education, with technology as a tool in that process. So the one, the most important one, which is like the umbrella part of the program, is our Innovative Schools program, where we uh, take 60 schools globally into the program and keep them in the program for a year. We call them Pathfinder Schools. It means that we have hired uh, educational experts from around the globe, because Microsoft's not an education expert. And what we do is we actually take these school leaders through a change management process where they turn around their school and focus on innovation. They train the teachers, they, they adopt more technology into the learning process, they engage parents in different ways. So the idea is that we give them sort of a kick into that new process. The interesting part is that if you're talking about Indonesia, Senegal, Finland, Russia, Mexico, Australia, or the UK, the, the problems, uh, the barriers, they're all the same. The biggest barrier, as we hear in the research, is time. Teachers want more time. If they can be given a little bit of extra time in their schedule to integrate new learning, new learning processes, integrate technology, change their way of learning, work in teams with each other, uh, they actually want to do so, but they want time and they want leadership support to do it. And then, of course, ICT access is another issue. If you don't have your own laptop, if your students don't have it, it's difficult. Industry is not dangerous. We're actually in it because we, we want to, to, to support and help. And I think um, we need teachers, but I also think that they could uh, benefit largely from working with us. We have a, a very clear interest in getting education more innovative, getting students to think critically, better communicators, better collaborating. So from an industry perspective, as well as a societal perspective, we find this really important. We have a about 150,000 employees across the world, and we need talented people. And uh, from a sales marketing perspective, we can normally quite easily get talented people. But when we talk about research, we spend $9 billion a year on research, and we need really high-level uh, tech people to be able to perform that research. I was managing this job in Denmark the first couple of years. I, I worked with Partners in Learning, and I went out to a lot of, especially high schools, and, and said to students, you know, what do you want to do when you, when you finish school? And uh, in Denmark, it's very popular to be either a doctor or a, a lawyer. So that was always top of the... And then I said, you know, but, but what do you want? What's, what's important for you in the job? What kind of values do you need to have in your job? So they wanted flexibility. They wanted, you know, they want the newest high tech. They wanted... So all these things that came up, I could put it up on the board and I said, so do you think you've got that when you're a doctor, you know, when you're in the hospital, for instance, when doing a career there? Do you think you've got flexible hours? Do you think you can take the afternoon off? Do you think you, mm, well, maybe not? And, and you actually got all that in the IT industry. The majority of the people who work in Microsoft here in Denmark are between mid-30s, late-30s. They all have small children. And uh, you could probably see that for yourself in, in the, the afternoon around 2 o'clock. It's almost empty, the office. People go home, they pick up their children, and then they lock on in the evening and do their job. Nobody looks at the watch when you come in the morning, or nobody looks at it when you leave. Everyone is just uh, quite sure that you reach your goal by the end of the year. So before I came to Microsoft, I was a head teacher. So uh, education is very near to my heart. And I find it's incredibly privileged to be able to work with educators all over Europe and, and to be able to see what they can do. And especially when, when you meet, because we're privileged that we work with the most innovative schools, the most innovative teachers, and it's um, incredibly inspiring and motivating to see what they can do. I think um, in my time it was, um, you were either uh, very STEM-minded and you became an engineer, or you went into some kind of humanities studies. And I actually did that. Uh, I, I started up doing history of art, then I gave that up. Then I did um, a BA in English and I decided English was much better as something you could speak, not your subject. And then I did a master's degree in business in economics and ended up here <laughs> eventually. <laughs>
So no, I never thought I would do anything to do with STEM. Because it's, it's a mindset. I think I could have done just as well in math as I did in English, but it was a mindset of what I thought was the funnest part. Uh, we have in Microsoft a program that we call DigiGirls, which is actually developed with that in mind. So we, especially high school girls, we invite to take part in training. Sometimes we make, invite them to a camp and they spend a couple of days and we tell them, a, we get some role, female role models out and, and they tell them about why they're in, in the IT industry. And then we teach them a little bit, you know, hands-on technology. They start off with some pretty easy stuff and by the end of the day when they leave, they have done some pretty hardcore programming. And we've had a lot of girls attending who started off saying that they wanted to be a doctor or lawyer and then ended up saying they wanted to be an engineer. And that's uh, kind of interesting that you can influence by showing what you do and, and what it's like. It was uh, one of those girls who said, I never thought I liked, I liked technology. This is really cool.